What's good, everybody? Boy, that's his flight man, baby. You know, with another video, man. And um, yeah, we got X Men reveal one division episode six Easter egg, man. Feel me? You know, man. I go, I go, my boy for the Easter egg. You know, I watch it like I did last night. I watched around two o'clock. You know, literally two o'clock or two or one. I watched it, man. You feel me? I paused it. I, you know, I was analyzing. But you know, I ain't I ain't too deep like him though. You know, he he go he go deep and die. You know what I'm saying? No son. But you know, hey, it's a lot of stuff that I saw though. You feel me? Like I saw, but you know, you know, hope he saw it too. You feel me? With, you know, of course he did. But you know, just just saying. But um, yeah, man, it's a lot of stuff. In episode six, like I said, after episode five, gonna be nothing but bangers. You know what I'm saying? Put that like they say it's born. Here we go. Here, here the episodes for y'all. You know me. I ain't gonna say that. But people that say it's boring and shit. Here the episode for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. You know what I'm saying? Here, here go to um, the bangers. You feel me? That you've been waiting for. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. Got an Easter egg for episode six, man. So about to um, about to write to it, man. About to see, you know, saying what he what he think about the episode, man. You know, I already know he's gonna go deep and dive in it. So hey, you feel me? If you see pauses, man. You know, I'm just analyzing shit, you know what I'm saying, what I see, when, you know, why I watch episode two. You feel me? That's why I pause it. I don't pause it, it's a pause, man. I pause it because I, I said the same thing or I said something similar. You feel me, man? Y'all get it, y'all get it. Okay, then. So, um, but, um, yeah, about right to it, man. And, um, yeah, about to see, about to see what he think about the episode six. But, um, yeah, leave a like, some of my channel, man. And, um, yeah, let's get it. What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to see the sixth episode of hey, WandaVision. Hey, if I not, saw spoiler that warning, six. we're going to go scene by scene, hey, act by act, break here, down <laughs> all of the Easter hey, eggs and narrative plot here, points. Man. In last night's episode, there were a ton pointing directly to the X-Men, the future of mutant kind in the MCU, possibly the future of the Avengers, and of course, more setting up the villain for the future of this series. We're going to break down everything episode 6, but first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're still giving away a PlayStation 5, enter to win, all you have to do, hit the subscribe button, comment down below, and if you want, stick around at the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there, and again, announce some brand new winners. Now, of course, the first easter egg in all of these episodes is the opening sequence itself, letting us know now that we're squarely in the early 2000s, both the opening sequence and uh, most of the episode predicated on Malcolm in the middle, which... I ain't know what, I ain't know what show it was, I ain't gonna lie with y'all, when I saw that, I'm like, gotta be some show that I recognize, but... <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't know what show it was, no cap. Ran up to 2006. No now on top of that, while they were giving us credits show, in that's the opening show. sequence as to who's who, Pedro Maximoff, in a moment that made me rewind before we even started the show, listed as himself. This is a slight joke from the writers to the audience, letting us know they know all the questions we have, and systematically, throughout the entirety of this episode, one by one, they ask those questions. Why he doesn't look the same. If he has the same memories, and we'll get to those when they come up. Now, of course, thing, the song like, lyrics like, to this theme song have been like the weeks past, it? explaining they what's going mean. on. The intro lyrics, don't try to fight the chaos, don't question what you've done later. They keep repeating, let's keep this going, let's keep this going. You never know who's going to show up and play. That's presumably pointing to whomever is behind this predicament in the first place. Now, I absolutely mm -hmm. loved the first act because it went a long way in explaining a lot of comic accurate costumes that have no place in the modern MCU, set them during Halloween to explain why they'd be wearing them in the first place, and then even poked fun at some of them, well, that deserved poking fun at. Right off the bat, we have Wiccan's costume. Yep, He's dressed in exactly what he wears in the. And he got, and he got the same power as his um, pops, Vision. You know what I mean? He, he can read minds and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then he got speed. They're like his brother, which is not his brother, but you know. that You know what I'm saying? So. Comics almost to a T. Of course, he teases his brother, but his brother is wearing green like he wears in the comics as well. Yeah. We then get the Scarlet Witch speed. costume. Maybe. She explains oh, it as a Sokovian fortune teller. Then we get Vision coming down the stairs in a costume so hilarious they had to make fun of it and one that would have never found its way into the MCU except for this exact occasion. Now, there are two huge X-Men X-Force Weapon X Easter eggs in this very first act, but before we get it. to them and because I, it's I know tied to this, we have to talk about the introduction of Pietro. Now look, Marvel knows 
this is our first look at the character since the huge reveal at the end of episode 5 and look at how they chose to set him up immediately via dialogue letting us know he slept until 4.30 he then plays with the kids and when Vision oh, yeah, yeah. says quote unquote good with children he's insinuating immature if you think about Aaron Taylor Johnson's portrayal of Quicksilver during Age of Ultron who this is supposed to be he was a bit of a cut up but he wasn't like this. During this episode, Evan Peters really reminded me of Michael Keaton's portrayal of Beetlejuice in the way of how brash he was and how rude he was. That wasn't what I remember out of Quicksilver, but I am saying a little further into this during the like episode. Because he wasn't like that at all. Like he was, he was, he was straightforward. Like he wasn't really playing with the kids and child. You know what I'm saying? So it's like something about to say. Something was up. Thumbs up, man. You feel me? Like. Now, the reason we had to bring this up is because while Quicksilver is shotgunning a soda with the kids in a blink and you would have missed it moment because you only get the full name for one or two frames, the name of the cola is Kane. There were only one or two Kanes in the entirety of the Marvel Universe, one of which a complete uh. unnotable. This is an Easter egg for none other than Garrison Kane, an original member of Cable's mercenary team, the Six Pack, who when he loses his arms and legs, ends up right beside Wade Wilson Deadpool in the second installment of the Weapon X program under Canada's Department K. Yes, all of the Wolverine, all of the Weapon X. This is a huge X-Force Easter egg. And of course, an Easter egg for Deadpool as well, which we know we're getting sooner than later in the MCU and the reported future of the franchise after Deadpool 1 and 2 was an X-Force film. Now, regardless of its connection, they put this in you were for sure to miss this at least a lot of people were the first time not, however I, I the exclamation it. point that lie. no one would miss it. is when vision says all that stands between the trees and the toilet paper is the neighborhood's watch and then puts his arms in the clear shape mm. of an x i really like that you might have missed the cane easter egg but you weren't going to miss this from vision now the only other thing i want to touch on before we move on in the episode is when wanda turns around she is super startled by pietro standing behind her actually more than startled she's terrified the way she screams the way she looks the way the guitar hits makes it feel like she has seen something quite different then the face of Evan Peters, which is what we see when the camera finally cuts. It is my hunch that we're going to get to see this moment again, much in the same way we did in the interaction between Wanda and Vision. Uh, and we we're going to get to see what she saw in yeah, that we, moment, we and I guarantee it. it's not going to be Evan Peters' face. Now, jumping directly into the next scene, there is a ton of loaded dialogue here, packed into just a couple of sentences from director Hayward, but it's also important to note that this is the moment where the indelible descent into the jerk turned into him finally becoming an actual enemy and not an ally of Monica Rambeau. He, of course, insults her in front of the crew, demotes yeah, him. He finds he finally turned. Uh, he finally turned. He finally stopped being the, the good guy, stopped being the bad guy, you know, stopped being the enemy and shit. So, but then shit turned love real quick, you know what I'm saying? So, so. Fires her alongside Jimmy Wu and Darcy Lewis. This is important, and remember this moment because it's going to come back to bite him later in the series. Now, the first thing that he says, which is super indicative and actually holds double meaning, is when he says, if we take out Wanda, we end this nightmare right now. First of which, the word nightmare, extremely poignant, considering if Mephisto is not the villain, he is the second up most likely villain for this scenario and the originally reported villain for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It's probably mm. also worth mentioning in this moment, as it's been said by a lot of people before, there are certain places in the world that wouldn't even allow the devil to be the villain in a film. On top of that, can you imagine a family-friendly company like Disney finally releases a Marvel show on their Disney Plus streaming service, and the main villain is the devil. All that being said, oh, yeah, there the is a chance that it's Nightmare, and yeah. if it is, then that word is meant to hold double meaning. It also makes it sound the way he says it, take Wanda out and we end this Nightmare now. The Nightmare for whom? The townspeople or for you? Like, Here comes Greg with your organic carrots. He credits sun, good soil, and a little something he just... He's behind it, set this thing in motion, it is way out of his control, and he just wants to end it now. Now the second huge piece of loaded dialogue, again in back-to-back -back sentences from director Hayward, is when he says, quote, always advocating on behalf of super-powered individuals, and then smirks and says, yeah, I know your history with Carol Danvers. The first of which, this is setting up the attitude of the government, agencies like S.W.O.R.D., 
towards enhanced individuals that will eventually become mutant kind in the MCU, leading to the perfect narrative and situation for the X-Men, how they create sentinels, how they're against mutants, how society will eventually come to see them as villains, and as I've said in the past, when you have quote-unquote superheroes or Avengers like Wanda Maximoff is supposed to be blowing up the side of buildings and killing civilians or mind-controlling entire towns, yeah. it's sort of easy to see how a public opinion can change from wanting to get autographs and pictures with Avengers to all of a sudden seeing them as enemies of the state. It's also important to note this is building towards whatever we're going to see come to pass in Captain Marvel 2 in the history between Monica and Carol Danvers. Whatever happened there, they've been seeding Easter eggs for that in the entirety of the series. Now jumping into the next scene, there are so many meta Easter eggs going on here. It's, it's hard to count, so let's just go one by one. The first of which... We finally get Wanda asking Pietro point blank why he doesn't look the same. And his answer here is super important because it's what he does in the yeah, entirety of the episode. Whenever right. Wanda has a question for him, mm. he immediately turns it on Wanda. In this case, he says, you tell me. It's probably because you don't want to be reminded of the past. In the intro to the episode, when they share that multiverse memory it that way, he says, well, you're probably just suppressing. That's what I was like. When he said trick or cheating, I mean, that's all the fish. I'm like, how long? That's how it was trick or cheating? You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like, question mark? Like, what? <laughs> Old trauma. Later in the episode, he brings it up again. He's always turning it on her in a way that while trick or treating, she says she doesn't remember it that way. He says, well, you're probably just suppressing old trauma. Later in the episode, he brings it up again. He's always turning it on her in a way that sort of implies or implicates that he does know what's going on, only because he always has an answer for everything at the ready. Although I do admit that later in the episode, when they're in town in the absence of the kids, he does a great job of selling that he is actually her old brother Pietro, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, in this mismatched body. Speaking of which, in one of the most meta easter eggs in the entirety of this series is when they go off to get candy he says kick ass she replies kick ass now kick ass is a marvel comic that was turned into a movie uh, directed i'm in that movie though man i'm in, I, I'm in that movie god kick ass shut up kick ass. You know, i'm in that movie they ain't, they ain't really do too well though that movie though they they didn't make a part two or part one I don't know. No, it made, it made a part one, but I don't know it made a part two, though. But I was on a movie, though, man, one time. One time was a fun time. And shit like that. By Matt Vaughn, starring Aaron Taylor Johnson as Kick-Ass with Evan Peters as his best friend. Again, this is a Marvel comic as well, turned into a film. Even more meta than that, that same director, Matthew Vaughn, who directed Aaron Taylor Johnson and Evan Peters side by side in the Marvel franchise movie Kick Ass, also directed X Men Days of Future Past, which of course featured Evan Peters as a version of Quicksilver. It is literally all the Easter eggs at once, mm. all the crossover you that, ever though. want, and the perfect dialogue woven into the scene to reference all of this, considering what's going on with the swap of Aaron Taylor Johnson and Evan Peters in a situation where they're both playing Quicksilver in a different Marvel franchise. Bravo to the writers on the scene. It was really well done. Either way, there is some more loaded dialogue throughout the scene. Herb implies that he is actually part of what's going on behind the scenes too. We know that from earlier dialogue with Agnes. It just seems like he's able to do something for her when she seems upset. He asks if he can change something. She also finds out Vision is not actually on the neighborhood watch, but rather in a sort of quest to get to the edge of town. Yeah, I was saying, he's all, he's all, yeah, I'm about to just go neighborhood watch. And, um, and yeah, I'm about to just, you know, but in reality, he's, he's trying to get the fuck out. <laughs> or he's trying to tell them people behind the, you know, the rally, hey, these people need help, you know what I'm saying? So, hey. Now we have to talk quickly about that Yo Magic commercial because I actually got some yeah, questions was, in was, DMs about yeah, what that was, commercial was confused, meant. Though. It was an allegory and metaphor for what Wanda was. I, I was confused when they posted it. I'm like, what I gotta do with it? You know what I mean? But, hey, maybe we do gotta do something with it. I don't know, but I'm like, you feel me? Like, what I gotta do with what the what the show or what's or what's similar to the show? You know what I mean? Like. Oh, no. Feeling Wanda, she said she felt forever lonely, okay. endless emptiness. She's the one stranded on the island. 
as that claymation character said, desperate. It's a sort of mashup of a Yo Play, Yo Magic commercial. That's what's in oh, there, okay. and as well as those old claymation brisk tea commercials. What this is meant to imply is the shark, who is typically a predator, gives someone who's desperate something and says it'll help them, but really they can't control it. They don't have a handle on it, and ultimately it leads to their demise. More than just magic being dangerous and there being consequences, that shark's the predator. She's lonely on the island. Ah, She's yeah, willing okay. to take what's ever handed to her that will seemingly help her emptiness and loneliness. Now the next huge group of clustered Easter eggs come when Darcy finally hacks in to Tyler Hayward's personal devices. First of all, we see a ton of medical files, all of which are letters and numbered call files. Then you have one name, Ray Johnson and Monica Rambeau. No, the alias Ray Johnson does not immediately tie to a Marvel or MCU character, but I'm sure with a little work, we can crack that code. We're gonna do a deep dive later in the week, maybe even later today, on what all these medical files could be. However, we do find out that Monica, having come and gone now inside the anomaly as she passed through twice, that th at 1-800-CONTACTS, we're here for people like Bianca, who'd rather get new contacts from her doorstep than her doctor. That sort of energy field is rewriting her cells on a molecular level. We hear this said, and she, of course, comes back with, I've seen enough charts, metastasize, remission. Yeah, She's talking see, about see, her see, mother's see cancer. Oh, I, I have an inkling that she I actually picked up her powers that. long Wait, before these episodes. I think there was some dialogue early when she met director Hayward. She was talking about being followed by drones, asking if this was because, and then she stopped short of saying it. I don't think it's because she was snapped. Later when they said they have to do more medical records in the second episode when she finally comes out from the anomaly, she says she's done with that and she doesn't need any more. That's because she doesn't need to know. I think something has already happened with her and that's why she's not concerned about it. Either way, whether my hunch is right or not, this is definitely leading to her becoming a superhero a member of the say, Avengers, right. either under the alias Photon, as they implied with the dialogue in the last episode, or maybe the name Spectrum, as she has taken in the comics before. This is what's going on with her. This is going to be the source of her power, perhaps the radiation in the force field created by Wanda, which again would just be a manifestation of what's coming originally from the Mind Stone. Now the rest of this episode goes by really fast. We get reveals from Quicksilver that he sort of knows the nuance and details behind what's going on in this town and admits that he's not mad, he's impressed. That sort of made me feel like he was sort of evil at heart too. Again, perhaps the villain, but then he asks how she did it as if he doesn't understand. And I think that's a point that really sold it to say, a lot of them. I was like, he acts, he acts hurt. Like, how you do all this? Like, how you got people walking around? How you got people moving around? You know what I'm saying? Doing whatever. Like, how you, and then she like, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how, you know, she said, I don't know how to start. And I was like, you know what I mean? Class like, you know, a lot of this shit, man. Plus, but if you didn't know how she did it, this might actually be her brother. Now we finally see a manifestation in both Wiccan and Speed's powers. Wiccan's powers look awfully cool, even though we only got a little glimpse of it when his hand glowed blue. He yeah. could hear what was going on with Vision, and it mm -hmm. appears as though when Vision finally made it through the barrier, if he was going to remain outside, her magic of resurrecting him or whatever was going on with keeping him alive inside the barrier was no longer present and he immediately curled up as if he was going to die in the yeah, same way that same. he did at the end of Infinity War. Yep, she Thor. then shows an amazing display yeah. of power and just basically makes the hexagon much bigger to encompass Vision, not letting him leave, turning yep. that whole part of town in. She turned a whole, whole, like it was like this small. She turned everything red, almost everything red to say to say Vision. She was crazy. To a circus, including Darcy Lewis. Now there is a ton to speculate as to what's going on with their power, again what's going on with the hexagon, if Tyler Hayward did actually set this all in motion as he keeps to seem implying, and still who the Something villain is, but him, given where this episode went already, you now know that well, S.W.O.R.D.'s main team that they put on the ground outside of this anomaly has been taken out. So whatever level threat she was before, wherever it ranked, Sometimes. is going to be basically cat out of the bag scenario, and this is where I think you call in the big guns aka Doctor Strange. So I would be very surprised if not the next episode or the one after that, they finally call yeah, in someone with some saying. real power who can handle something like this to actually go there. The only other huge Easter egg now, we know that that mysterious aerospace engineer 
is a hymn. Some people had speculated that it might have been Riri Williams' Ironheart, maybe even that small scroll child, but it seems like maybe the people speculating this is Reed Richards might have it right. We should see so next episode. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below. I want to hear your theories, Easter eggs we missed, and of course, we are going to do a run back, deep dive on all of the huge details including those file numbers, and try to figure out what is going on with all this. Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below and quickly. Um, Yeah, man, leave a like, man. So my channel to my channel hit the bell for new, man. That was episode six, Easter eggs, man. Um, Yeah, if you like the Easter eggs, man, if you want some more Easter eggs, man, hey, let me know in the comments down below. And um, yeah, that was one division, man. And let me know what y'all think about one division. Since episode one to episode six, let me know what y'all think. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it boring? Is it... Is it awesome is it you know what i'm saying hey let, let, let your boy know in the comments but um yeah man you know i like watching his videos man you know you know before i you know before i watch you know watch my own show you know what I'm saying oh you know the whole episode you know then i always go to him because he like to deep dive and stuff like that so and um yeah so but hey it's a lot it's a lot of stuff man on episode six there's a lot of shit happening in episode six and um yeah a lot of stuff happening man so hey like, if you said, like I said before, if you said it was boring, man, no, it's, it's, it's going to be good. You know what I'm saying? If you, know, if you say it was boring, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But, um, yeah, leave a like. So, my channel, y'all. And, um, yeah. All right. Peace.